The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We are over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, and Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Look, um, I want to thank you guys for supporting this show. Every week it gets tougher and tougher to do this show because of YouTube. They pull it out of the algorithm because we talk about real stuff. We talk about words. If I say right now, we'll get this episode demonetized. Um, So thank you for supporting this show. It's an important show. I love what we do over here. We're not just hanging. We're talking about real stuff, and uh, you're getting to know what you know, the true stories behind these people. Um, Thank you for supporting the YouTube special. Uh, They also pulled that off, Lefty Sun. They demonetized that. So if you want to support the special, you got to go find it and watch it. It was crushing. It had over half a million views in two weeks. And then, boop, they pulled it. We appealed it. They said, nah. So it is what it is. Uh, But if you're looking for more and you got to have more, then you got to check out the Patreon. It's the honeydew with y'all. And I'm telling you, every week it gets wilder and wilder. And I say that every week here. And then I don't know what we're going to listen to. And then I hear stuff and I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) <laughs> so it's five bucks a month. And if you're out there and you got a story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. Hopefully we'll get to do an episode together. And if you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, I'm telling you, go listen to my old podcast, The Crab Feast. It's still doing crazy numbers. You guys are loyal. You guys are awesome. And today's guest actually had a great episode on there. So uh, that's the the biz right there. Now, look, I'm on tour. We're adding a bunch of dates. We got a bunch more this year. We're going to be out all year next year. I got to go a little slow because of everything that happened to me, as you know. But June 23rd and 24th, I'll be in Tacoma, Washington. July 7th and 8th, I'm in Appleton, Wisconsin. Go get your tickets at ryansickler.com. You'll see a bunch of dates added. If I'm in your town when you're there, come out and see me. There it is. Now, you, you know what we're doing over here. We're highlighting the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Today, I am very excited to have my guest here for the first time on The Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Frankie Quinones. Welcome to hey. The Honeydew, Frankie. Did I say it right? Yeah. Did I hit yeah, that yeah. NDA right? You hit that NDA right, right, that my right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, it's good to have you here. Um, we've been talking about this for a minute. So before yeah. we get into anything, plug, promote, everything, all of it, please. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Well, my name is Frankie Quinones at Frankie Quinones on all social media platforms. Uh, I'm on a show called This Fool on Hulu, which I make with one of my best friends, and we're uh, I'm a co-star with him. And then uh, we got Michael Imperioli's another main character. It's a good vibe. Best way I could describe it is like the movie Friday meets the show Atlanta. Um, but we got the second season premiering July 28th. That's so a big deal. It's hard to get a out. second season. Yeah, yeah, especially nowadays. You know mm-hmm. how it is out here, homie. And also be on the uh, uh, upcoming season of uh, What We Do in the Shadows. And then, um, yeah, other than that, homie, just, you know, trying to keep it moving, hitting the clubs, doing the stand-up, and trying to navigate through these algorithms that are fucking us up. That's what I'm talking <laughs> <laughs> I'm screwed on mine. All that time, effort, money for YouTube to go, nah, nah. <laughs> Crazy. Which is why the Patreon's important. Subscribe to the Patreon. They don't edit you over there. Um, Cholo Fitness, first of all. If you haven't seen that, dude, yeah. it's one of the funniest damn things. Is that what, what started the show for you? Is that like what got the ball rolling with Hulu? No, not with Hulu, just in general in my career. Mm -hmm. So this fall will be 17 years since I started chasing this dream. And uh, naturally in my stand-up, I'd be storytelling and imitating my family and voices and stuff like that. I was already doing multiple characters, but I did a character based on my father, who just an old-school homie, old-school cholo, but one of the most positive people I know. Always Chuck Taylors, Dickies, creased up, always drive to Lolo, but always drive me little league practice, you know what I'm saying, being a good dad. And so um, that's what Creeper is the character's name is that. And, you know, he started Cholo Fit to tap into that positive part. Like, hey, homie, I'm trying to get you in shape and get your life <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And um, and uh, that that uh, went viral. And uh, it was a little overwhelming because, I was, you know, I was doing it, you know, I'm, I'm from out here. So it's like I thought it was just going to be that. But, man, I, I remember it was like that. Like we posted it and we're like, damn, it was doing pretty good. And I woke up in the morning. I had messages from thailand from fucking canada from fucking dope, dope, the, the dopest one was uh 
dude, I got these dudes from Australia. They sent me a, a, a photo, right? And it's two of them doing a cholo squat and they had a baby Joey, you know, a kangaroo yeah, in the yeah. middle looking like nah. he's doing a cholo squat. And they're like, cholo fit, mate, cholo fit, mate. And I was like, what the fuck is happening on me? Like, fools that didn't yeah. even know what a cholo was, they still yeah. embraced the character for whatever reason. So that's when I was able to start getting weekends at clubs and really start hitting the road. Before that, my first big break was my, bo my boy Craig Robinson took me on yeah. the road. And uh, he's the one who, you know, got me acclimated to that road life and helped me know the clubs and... And, um, you know, he, he really uh, was a great mentor. And he just, he was the first one to open the door for me, you know. So, uh, but I was still struggling, sleeping on the homie's couch for 200 bucks a month. But when Cholo Fit went viral, I was able to start hitting the road. And then um, and then me and my homies made a show called Dress Up Gang, which is a, a sketch group that I'm a part of, Dress Up Gang. Uh, you can look that up. Just look up Dress Up Gang on YouTube. We got some funny shit, Cute House, Frankie in the Water. We got all these sketches. We made a show for TBS, speaking of al algorithm things. Uh, in 2017. So 2017 is when my life, uh, I was serving, a, delivering a sandwich when I got the call that we sold that show. And um, I was delivering it to like this white college kid at the dorms in UCLA. And they got a call and they go, yo, motherfucker, we sold the show. They want 10 episodes. And I almost just ate the sandwich. But then... <laughs> But I delivered, the oh, funny thing yeah. is, homie, I delivered it, right? And this college is, oh, what's up, dude? You know, fucking thanks for my sandwich. And I'm like, yeah. And I was like, dude, fucking, you're, you're my, I was just so emotional at the time, yeah, you know? Yeah, I bet. Yeah, so what'd like, you dude, say? You're my last delivery, homie. I almost didn't deliver it, but me and my homies just sold the show to fucking TBS and da, da, da. And he was like, yeah, cool, man. Like, uh, you know, uh, did you bring any mayonnaise? Like, you know, he just like, he didn't get, he thought I was fucking out of my mind. Like, okay, sure, bro. Listen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't it funny? Like when you dream about your dream, you dream all these things. You, yeah. You know what I mean? And then you get a call about a 10 episode pickup when you're delivering a motherfucking sandwich. You know what yep. I'm talking about? You don't, you don't see that in the, you know what I mean? No, That's not where it no. is. No, I mean, it's yeah. not like that. Like, it's also funny to me that we pour, like everyone, we pour all our lives into this one thing. And then this this little ant that works next door, this little worker ant's like, good for that. I don't even know who the fuck that guy is. Give him my fucking sandwich. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And it's nothing to them and everything to us. It's oh, crazy. Man. And whatever he's going after, like, that's cool. You're, uh, you're, you're the Adam Sandler, Sandler of doctors. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. That's what's up. Where's yeah. my fucking sandwich, man? Check my blood pressure, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, shit, um, all right, well, let's talk about your life because you definitely had a different upbringing. Um, you grew up I out mean, here, but you talk about your mom. You talk about your dad. Let's let's talk about your growing yeah, up man. A it's bit. like uh, I've, I've had a good life, homie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, I was the one where like kind of like my mom and dad they they got us out of the hood. You know that whole shit. I know everybody has that story, but not um, everybody. I mean, well, you know, you hear that's. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm all like, I need to be more confident. I'm a super insecure motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, hey, sorry too, hey, for existing. <laughs> hey. But anyways, my mom, uh, she's uh, she's the one that she's the funny one, the outgoing one. She grew up, she grew up uh, uh, the oldest of all her siblings in the projects, homie, in the Colonia projects, six. And six. so she helped raise those kids because she had a military father who was abusive. And I used to be uncomfortable talking about that because that's my grandpa, you know? Right. And there might be some of my family that watches this, but I might be uncomfortable saying this, but he fucked up, homie. You know, he abused his own children. He abused his daughter, which is my mom, in, in every way, you know? It, anyways, my point is, is, my dad lived around the block, homie, in the same hood, you know what I'm saying? Same thing, sharing a room with all his siblings. But they were the ones that fucking somehow the universe brought that. They met when they were in the playground, you know, in the in the neighborhood playing. Kid, legit my dad kids. was like eight. My mom was like five or six wow. when they met. You know what I'm saying? And then um, my uh, my dad borrowed his sister's car when he was 16. My mom was about 14 and they went on their first date. You know what I'm saying? But my point is, is that they had a lot of things against them, you know, and like being abused like that, especially for my mother. Like, people literally telling her, like, you, you ain't never going to be shit. Look where we're at. What the fuck? And they overcame that, man, and they did it. And then I saw them when I was young, when they didn't have money, how powerful, like, humor was to them. They were diehard stand-up fans, homie. You know what I'm saying? Who they like? Like, oh, dog. 
So when they were dating, they would drink their alcohol in the parking lot and order soda for their two drink minimums. They would go to a comedy store, the Hollywood Improv. Oh, no shit. They that. go see live comedy. Yeah. Oh, hell me. yeah. So okay, when they good. come see me there, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Wow. But they would they would let me watch. Even when I was a youngster, my mom would be at me home, cover your ears in the bad parts. But, you know, I'm, I'm like this. Yeah. And uh, we're watching Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy. One of their favorites was George Carlin, which was dope to me because I'm seeing this young Mexican couple as a kid. You know, because George Carlin was on some intelligent shit. He's mm-hmm. breaking down what what the, what the fuck Government, really is going politics, on. Politics, all, all that of shit, it, yeah. homie. And they were being, they don't know nothing about that. But it's because the humor, they were into the humor. It brought him into that. He that motherfucker educated them and was like, "Dang, he's right," and he's making me laugh at the same time. I'm like, it was just levels of shit. And then you know, Paul Rodriguez was the first one I saw look like me on TV. And then, um, and then you know, we as as we got older, they they were uh. They started doing better at life. They're they're hard workers, man. They were just working every day of the week. And it was just me and my sister doing the damn thing. It's just two of you, two kids. Um, at first it was just, yeah, yeah. They just had two of the kids. And we used to live in a, a one bedroom apartment in San Fernando in the valley. And then um, and then and then they saved up, man, and they got us out of there. We moved to a cul-de-sac and shit. And I was like, damn, you know, like to go from a one apartment to a cul-de-sac, like fuck, straight crazy, you know, fools are rollerblading and shit. And I'm like, I'm actually working on a bit right now where like my mom's jealous of me that I'm going rollerblading with like these like these white dudes down the block, you know, like yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause she's from the hood, she's like, Oh, you having fun rollerblading, huh? Like, fuck, okay, enjoy it, you know, like but uh, you know, our neighborhood was still diverse. We weren't balling. We just got, you know, we got a two-story home and a cul-de-sac. So it was, it's it was, funny, it was, cul-de-sac yeah. is a word I yeah. didn't know. I, I I grew up learning court. Right, it's right. called yeah, a court yeah, yeah. where court. I grew yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And then later in high school, I was like, somebody said cul-de-sac, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And yeah. like, it's a little dead end. I'm like, you mean a court? And they're like, same shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, same right. shit, homie. Yeah, you you're moving up if you gotta if you live at oh, the dead yeah. end. Yeah. And it it was kind of funny too because we were on a corner, we got a corner house, and my mom, they signed the worst loan deal ever. Like, my, my mom and dad just wanted to get us out, man. They wanted to get us out. They want. They were so dedicated to their kids, you know what I'm saying? I'm forever indebted to them for that, you know what I mean? But they were in over their heads, man. We were constantly getting our power turned off, constantly getting our water turned off, but my dad had the tool to turn the water back on. Nah, did So he? he would be like, hey, is everybody take, ready to take a shower? He would go out there, all right, take a shower, take a, all right, turn it off. You know, and fucking, my, my fucking dude, my dad was a G, homie. You know, <laughs> and then I'll never forget this man. My uh, one time we got the power turned off. When you're a kid, you're not tripping off like, you know what I mean? If you have cereal and so you're like, hey, it's whatever. Yeah. But I'll never forget this. Like we had the power turned off one time, but my mom had a boombox, dog, and uh, uh and uh, she had double D bat. You know the double mm-hmm. D batteries boombox. No, she lit the candles. We had the power turn on. She lit all the candles, fucking put the beats on, and she's dancing with me and my sister, you know, just in the thing. And so as kids, you're like, oh, fuck, we're having a little candlelight party. And to think the pain that is happening in my parents where they can't even keep the power on, but they're just dancing it off Making on me. you feel good so about that. So that whole shit. That's why that's my whole thing is like- Very unselfish. You know, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like positivity, mm-hmm. humor, and music is one of the most, you know, that's one of the most powerful things. It's their religion, homie, especially like old school funk. My sister's name is Tina Marie. After Tina Marie, they yeah, went they yeah. went to Rick James's funeral. Like Did that, they? that was their shit, homie. You know what I mean? Like that that my mom calls them her Ricky Rick, my Ricky Rick. You know. But um, I, anyways, my point is, man, is that was my biggest inspiration is seeing how powerful and strong humor, laughter. Some of you listen to your podcast having the worst day, but you say some shit that makes them laugh. Like you know what, man, I'm gonna be all right. Cause you know we're good. We're good. It's also you know? perspective. You know, it's like you hear someone else's story sometimes, and I, for me, sitting in this seat over the years, I've been like, man, what the fuck am I bitching about? You know what I mean? Like for real, when you hear somebody else's shit, you're like, good god, dude, you I, went through all that. Yeah. No, but still though, we did it, homie. Mm-hmm. Like you know, come on, man, you got your own fucking studio, but you look at here, look at this guy right here. You know, he's like University you're doing of good, Nebraska, bro. <laughs> University of Nebraska. Hell yeah, Kick boy. Two field goals there. You know what I'm saying? Tell like, me about um, growing up. You said you you struggle with uh, addiction. You yeah, struggle, man. You is know, it, is it more alcohol, drugs, what drugs? You, I mean, drugs? alcohol's not really my. I could like when I drink. Before I drink for like two days, I don't. I don't get there. I want a, bur- a burrito and a stack of pancakes to go watch Sports Center, go to sleep. Mm-hmm. But when you start getting the drugs involved, you know, because I'm trying to uh, escape, homie, it's the only thing that works. And dr- drugs do work until they stop working. You know, you feel me? 
And so even though I had a loving mom and dad, we still grew up how we grew up. And it's like my mom, you know, it was intergenerational trauma, man. My mom was abused in every way. You know, my dad, you know, he had a, you know, he grew up in a rough neighborhood. He's out there in the streets. So, uh, you know, they, they don't have those tools. They, they were never went to therapy, none of that. So they were professional suppressors, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And so. Well said. You know, my, 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 yeah. uh, I had some primos that, you know, they used to stay with us and stuff like that. Cause my dad was looking out for them and, uh, cousin, sorry. But, I know, what, I know, but, primos. yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, yeah. The, I would say the most I've had a good life on me because I had love. You know, some motherfuckers never get love their whole life, and sometimes you give the you can give the worst person a small amount of love and it changes their whole life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um and and that and so but for me I had love in the home. It's just that we didn't have the tools to deal with all this shit. So one of my older cousins so I was you know I'll try to be down you know you know you're being I was like five six seven years old for three years this was happening but you know you look up to your older cousin you look out you look you up to them yeah they're like brothers and sisters you, you know? from another somebody else exactly yes, you look at them to for to protect you and they're gonna teach you about life and and then you know he ends up fucking molesting me you know for fucking three years you know and Whoa. it's like and by the third year I was like and how old are you I was five six and seven years old and he's teenager. Middle school. He's a uh, he's about seventeen. 16, oh, he's a well, oh. well, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, you know? high school. Yeah, so. And do you mind me asking you what he's doing to you? Like, how does that even start? Oh, man, it's a, uh, you know, hey, let's, you know, we're playing with my toys on the floor and the thing, and you know, you, you know, you just start, you know, he starts fucking around, he's touching, touching shit, you know, and, and then how's he, he and he's like, hey, let's take a shower, you know, and da 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 and. Because my mom and dad think he's like babysitting me, you know. Gotcha. It's all love. It's familia. So they're gone. We're good, or right. they're there in the house, you know. But they're just doing other shit, you know. I'm I'm a kid, homie. So right, you know nothing. You know, I still feel guilt. Like I did that shit. I'm a gross motherfucker, dude. You know. Sorry, I'm not trying to cry on honey. No, dude. Hey, Nebraska. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> wait, but, you uh, still feel gross about it. I, you know, I'm trying to process the shit. You got to. I, I, you got to understand. Now, it's five years yeah. old. You don't even. You don't. You, you still believe in Santa Claus. Exactly, homie. You know what I'm saying. You I'm still thinking, believe in fairies yeah. and bullshit. And you know? Elves, la chingada, homie. Yeah. And so, I just thought that that's what life was. And okay, this is how we're connecting. You know. But it's like, you so know, you're, then, you're then he's like taking me in the shower. You know. He's, we're fucking doing the whole shit, man. Like, he's like, look, he goes, he's fucking going down on my shit. Like, that's how you do it. I'm going down there, looking up at him, like, you know, fuck, if I'm, like, am I doing good? It's like, that's a tough thing, man. And for the longest time, motherfucker, I held that shit in for 27 years. Because what the fuck? When did you finally? Man, what are people going to say about me when they hear this shit? I don't give a fuck anymore, man. You shouldn't. I think more of us should talk about it. Yeah. A lot of motherfuckers go show, through this shit. So men, so many men don't. They, you, they do what you said. They professional suppressors. Let me just push that shit down. Fuck it. And then it, it, it manifests in other ways, whether mm -hmm. it's addiction or abuse or all of it. You know, yeah. so I, I we have got to talk about mental health. Men, we're in this weird position as men, We, our generation specifically, because yeah. I go back to thinking about like my grandfather's time. Those men fought in World War II. Mm -hmm. Then there's my father's era. Those men were going to Vietnam. Then there's us like, I want to be a clown. And they're yeah. like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, what kind of man are you? I want to act. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. You want to act? They're like, okay, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck kind of man? You need to get your ass to work. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but also at the same time, do you have kids? No kids. No. So we're also the the our generation of of these dads that are the I love you dads, the dads that are going to therapy, trying to break all that generational bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So that we don't pass that on to the next and the next and the next and keep it going. Exactly. So we gotta, it's a we weird fucking it. time to be a man in this world, uh, where you know what men used to be and where they're going and all the bullshit that's right there in the middle. So I'm glad to hear you talk about it. I know that shit's not easy to talk about. Hell so, no, so homie. I don't yeah. want you to sit and live in that those memories, but tell me, you said you suppressed it for 20 what years? 
27 years, years man. And when then did like, it pop for you where you were like, no more of no more of me just dealing with this? When did it shift for you where you were like, I got to talk about this and get better about this? Oh, man. Because uh, honestly, for the longest time, I was like, ah, you know what? It's not a big deal. I've had a good, you know, I got homies. I got my family. I got childhood. My childhood's cool. I got Kool-Aid and tortillas. Like, hey, we're good. <laughs> you know, and then, uh, you know, you kind of, have ways of deflecting it. You get good at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's one of the things me and Bobby Lee had, because Bobby Lee, you know, he's sober and all that shit. And we kind of went through some similar shit. And he was like, you know, that's why we got good, so good at being funny is because you want everybody to like you and you don't want to feel like that person that you felt when you were doing that fucked up shit. You know, but I was like, always just trying to fit in, homie, and just trying to figure this shit out. And it's like, to have nobody, at, you know, you're seven years old. I finally got him, or you know, I, I put him up. You know, I kind of announced it, and so it got shut down. But for three years, I should deal with it. And then it was like, all right, don't ever talk about it again. You know, for so no, for for nobody to come and check on you, like as a seven year old, like not even. Like, hey, so you remember? So what you happened did bring right it there. up. So, oh yeah, at seven. Yeah. So after a couple years of it, yeah, you my finally mom, my say mom made something. me fucking brush my teeth, do the mouthwash, throw la chingada, like, and then drove him home, and then never talked about it again, and still would invite him to, you know, I still got to see him at family parties, no. all this. It was like that. That's how we do in our community, homie. Like, hey, all right, that happened, but okay, it stopped. Though, so just forget about it, you know. But and and honestly, homie, my whole life I thought I'm good. I've had a, I got a good life. Hey, fuck, motherfucker, shit. We out here. We're living the earth, the trees, and da da da. But as you get older, it wasn't until I was getting in my thirties, it started eating me. You know, because I never dealt with it. You, you know, I never processed it. I had this scary little fucking kid sucking. You know, fucking doing that, getting molested inside of me, and he was like, "Yo, motherfucker, if you don't take care of me, shit's gonna get fucked up in here." You know, and so I fucking turned to drugs, dog. I started fucking whatever, you know. Can we go back for a second? Did your mom tell your dad or was this a secret from your dad? Did you tell your dad? No, I told both I told both of them. I, I sat down, you know, and I, I was like, hey, mom and dad, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I thought it was uh, cool. Like, I thought it was like whatever, but now I feel, I feel weird. Like, but here's what's been happening, you know. And then when I, I 27 years later, I mentioned that to them. They they were like, we don't remember that. It, it They were, they like. They blocked Suppress it out. Suppressed it so hard and blocked it out that they literally took it from their memory. You know Neither what I'm one of them remember it. Nope. Until later, I, when I was like, fucking, you know, I, 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 you know, because of SAG, you know, union, you get insurance. And I was like, well, fuck, maybe insurance covers the therapy, so maybe I should go, you know? And, um, and then, you know, they educate you on all that shit. Mm -hmm. And they gave me the literature and they're like, look, motherfucker, you got PTSD. You got fucking this. You got fucking that. This is what happened and, to you. And, yeah. This is why. And, yeah. and, and, and it was amazing because it was like, it was just incredible to find that information. And, and it's also comforting because I'm like, oh, damn, they print literature on the shit that I've been through. That means all these motherfuckers are going through this shit. But it's like, it was just incredible to, to, to see that like, damn, I've been living my whole life like that. Like, Every decision I made in life, that shit's been affected. You know, every time I walk into a room of strangers and I feel that sense of insecurity, it's all come, you know, from this place. But with that being said, like, fuck, homie, I got a roof over my head, food on the table. I made, I made it in this comedy shit. I'm not like an ego motherfucker. I don't think I'm like, hey, I'm the funniest motherfucker. But to go from, from that, I was already 35 sleeping on my homie's couch. But the shit popped for me, you know, thank, thankfully. And so... There's always a fear of failure and there's also a fear of success. And people think fucking money's gonna bring happiness and all that. Dog, I fucking bought my, I, bought, I never thought I'd be a homeowner. I, you know, it's only a little condo, but I bought that motherfucker out here, you Fuck know? Yeah, good right for you. Right mm -hmm. and, and yet I would still bring myself to a place where I'm on my knees in the living room of a, my own pad that I bought, just begging the fucking universe to take this monster from me so I don't keep trying to destroy myself. You feel me? Yeah. But at the same time, from that darkness, homie, I get on that stage and I'm like, I, it could be a room full of strangers. And I'm like, I got y'all. We about to feel good. <laughs> yeah. Because it's all, you know. Well, that's what I love about comedians. And starting this show, too, made me fall in love with comics all over again because they're, we're some of the people that can take the ugliest shit 
and spin it into something that's so funny and makes other people feel so fucking good. Like that's magic, mm. man. That's a magic thing that we've possessed. Instead of just going angry with it and shooting up a fucking building or some shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? What a difference. I, I, know, I feel like what if some difference. comics didn't have comedy, they'd be that motherfucker no blowing up a building. No doubt. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. So do you ever see this cousin anymore? Is this dude still alive? Is Yeah, yeah, he's around, man. Yeah. And, and have you and ever talked to him? Like, did I, I you did. ever I have said, a one-on-one with this dude? Like, look, I said, I said, hey, homie, we need to go to lunch. We need something. We need to talk about this. Be- because, you know, I start, I did start going How to How old were you when you did, when you made him go to lunch? We haven't gone yet. Oh, shit. It's only been like a year ago that I told oh, him, okay, hey. okay, sorry. So he's still like, you know, around me. And ah, fuck, man, the only thing is, I went through stages with it. I'd be like, I would like piss at that motherfucker. Yeah, this is like, your family too. Like, what the fuck on me? You did that shit to me? Like, as I got older, you know? I'm like, fuck that fool. But then I would think, damn, the shit that he went through. Right, like, who, who was doing that to him? Exactly. Right. So this, so I started sympathizing because I just didn't want to be angry anymore, homie. But now I'm at a point like, all right, you know, I see him and, and we're cordial because my grandpa's, my, my abuelito's 95. We always have barbecues, and I don't want to like kill the vibe for my grandpa. He's like, but he's about to be literally. Out. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, literally. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say what's up and everything. And the thing is, is you know, his brother's one of my best friends and all that, and they, none, no, nobody knows, you know. So no so, one knows because your mom and dad shut it down, repressed it, forgot about it. I mean, and, and he'd obviously never. So, who, so, whose son is this, by the way? Is your mom's sister, brother, your dad's sister? Yeah, brother? shit. We don't get into too many details, but there's, you know, my primos are gonna, some primos are gonna be watching this podcast, you know, but, but yeah, it's on my dad's side. But, anyways, what uh, if they're watching this podcast and they're like, holy shit, that happened to me too? What if you're not the only one? Yeah, and that's very possible. You know, of course it's possible. But my main thing right now is like, I, I you know, I know not to, He's never apologized to me for it. That's the thing, you know. But like my pop, my pops and my mom. After I told them after that twenty seven years, I said, "Man, what the fuck, man? Like, you know, that shit fucked me up. It happened in our own pad. If you don't feel safe in your own home, homie, yeah. where the fuck are you gonna feel safe in the world? You know, I'm out here scared, dog. I'm scared of this motherfucker. You know, that's why I'm like, fuck it. Let me just make entertain as many people as I can." Cause I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen, but you know I would love to get an apology from him, and I feel like that would solve a lot. Or just hear, like I just hope that you're still not doing it. You know, like, yeah, that's you know? a great point. And, 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 and think like, of that: Are you continuing that behavior? And, yeah. and, and and the thing is, like he would be doing that shit to me, but he would protect me. You know, like which was weird. That's confusing. Yeah, what do you mean? Like when we'd be on the streets and shit, like the, the, like. Him, you know, and his brothers and all my other cousins, they're they're all they were all gangbangers. I even went through a stage where I'm like, oh, I want to be down with him. And I got the dickies and the thing. And that's why I got this dent in my I don't know if you can see it, but I got like a little Yeah, I see it from yeah, what? Yeah, man. Cause I'm to be honest, I, I found I was sprung on a chola, homie. I was like, fuck, I want to get with her. And then, you know, she saw my cousins were, so I, you know, I fucking was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna fucking get all cholo style with it. My mom was like, You ain't wearing that shit. My dad's like, nah, nah, let him. Cause my dad knew. He's like, I'm gonna let the motherfucker learn. Mm-hmm. But he would wake me up at five to make sure I crease my shit. Did he really? Because he was like, yeah, if you're yeah. going to rock this shit, you're going to do it right. 5 a.m. Fucking yeah. homie. At 12 years old, he's waking me up at 5 a.m. to I'd crease like, my shit. Fuck those pants. To yeah, go to fucking yeah, junior yeah, high. Yeah, no. Anyways, fucking, I, I'm in the bathroom at school and these fucking fools from another hood come to me. Hey, fool, where you from? I said, throwing up my shit. And they jumped me, you know, and, and they slammed my head against the metal door. Did they? And I got 12 staples in my head. And, and my, you know, my mom told me not to worry. So I go home lying to her. I'm like, no, we were playing basketball and I half fell on a brick wall and ah, oh, dang, you know. And so I made up these lies. But, but, that's, but I'm glad that happened at a young age, at 12, because I immediately switched back to Bugle Boy jeans and cargo <laughs> shorts. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying yeah. to be something I wasn't, homie. Yeah, I ain't a fighter, yeah. homie. I'm a lover, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but my but my primos always had my back. And even the most gangster ones, even though when I was trying to be down with them, they always knew, homie. They told me, they're like, you're going to do something special, primo. You know, even the f- most fucked up ones, you know. And I had one cousin. He was all drunk one night and I'm kicking it and he had a strap, you know, and, he, and he's just drunk and he's like, damn, you know, and he, he's, he's holding it to my face. How does that feel? How does that feel? 
just tell me, primo, how's that feel? How's that feel right there? Like fucking with me. Dog, I had nightmares about that shit for like 10 years. You I'll know? bet. But like about four years ago, he apologized to me for it. And why? And, and, and why did he apologize? Yeah, did he just come to it on his own or did you say something about it? He, I, I, no, he remembered on his so own. That must have been fucking with him too. And exactly. And, which made me feel even more because he's got a good heart, man. Right. He was off that shit. He was smoking fucking meth and shit. He was just gone, homie. And I didn't even think he remembered. But fuck, man, when he told me that shit, I cried, I hugged him, and I What'd said, I say? fucking love you, homie. It's out of nowhere, he came up to you and said it? Yeah, and he goes, hey, man, remember that shit when I would be fucking with you when you were a little kid? Because it wasn't just that. Like, he had me in the corner of a garage with a weed whacker to my face, like, fucking, yeah, and he would be doing shit like that to me, too, you know? And, uh, you know, but it did kind of toughen me up in a way, even though I'm not a fighter, I know that if you want to fuck around on the streets, oh, you will get fucked up, you know, like... And especially nowadays, it's crazy. Like, it would be a 16-year-old popping off to you. I'm like, this little motherfucker. And then all of a sudden, it's like, bah, man, you're dead. It's like, I'm trying to keep it cool, homie. Yep. And so. That's what uh, I asked Ali Sadiq what he missed about prison. And he said the one thing that he truly missed about prison was in prison, there's consequences for running your fucking mouth. Oh, yeah. Most yeah. people aren't on, uh, well, nobody's on a keyboard making their little bullshit comments. If you're going to say something to somebody, you better be you better be fucking ready because it's <laughs> yeah, right? all aggressive alpha motherfuckers in there that want some of that smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, give me all of it. You want they're some, right, let's like, I'm go. Bo- they're like, they're bored. Oh, yeah, man, what's so up? So you ain't yeah. going to walk up just so, you know, be a Karen all popping off about shit because in there you're going to get fucked <laughs> yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, you can't be no male carrier no. in prison, homie. You'll get Bit, fucked you'll up. You'll get fucked yeah. up. So if somebody's got a problem with you in prison, then you know they got a problem with you. Oh, yeah, And yeah. you know it's going to be something. Woof, man. It ain't out here on the streets where everybody thinks they can <sighs> run their fucking mouth and then pull a gun out. and uh, Not in prison. Nah, I mean, they man. might have a, a shank or something they made, but they had to put time and effort into that shit. Oh, you know what I mean? Fuck, homie. It's not the quick pow and you're that fucking dead. not a place for me. Woof. If you need an afternoon reset, do yourself a favor and snag five minutes for a dad grass toke break or two. They've got mom grass joints as the perfect pick me up to spark your creative flow or the original dad grass joints to quiet your mind after your nine to five. Dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre rolled joints and flour are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. If you're not looking to toke, Daggrass also offers the finest tinctures and gummies on the market. All the mellow goodness, no smoke required. All Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Daggrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Daggrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to daggrass.com slash honeydew. Go to daggrass.com slash honeydew for 20% off your first order. That's daggrass.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the dude. So he apologized, man. That meant a lot to you, huh? Hell yeah, homie. Hell yeah. He's Because he's a good-hearted person now. You know, he got his shit together. All right, so tell me about this cousin only a year ago. So what's what's the delay for him? He knows. He doesn't want to. Yeah, I, honestly, I need to take the set and be like, hey, yo, I'm about to swoop you up. Yep. I'm going to go to lunch. And you well, do I wanna, need to I, you take. Know? But the thing is, I can't be just from the therapy. You know, they told me you, you don't go in expecting an apology or whatever. But check this out, homie. I don't want to ramble, ramble on too much, but. Um, we got a little time. When, you know, and I told my mom and dad about it, and they were like, and my dad was like, well, fuck that. He's not invited in this pad anymore. This is 27 years after, you know? And fucking like, and some of my other family got, became aware of it. And then like a month later, fucking, they invited him to a barbecue uh, that they knew I was going to be at. Only one month after I said like, yo, this shit went down. And I show up, homie, and I swear my heart dropped. I felt just like I didn't even know what to feel. I went and sat on the couch in the living room. Not, he's just out there manning the grill. You know, and I'm like, do they not believe me? Did I am I being a bitch? Did I fuck up? And so I wrote a joke about it. It's my favorite joke, homie. And I can't tell it every time. I'm still not there yet to be confident enough to tell it. But in some alt rooms and shit like that, I'll say it. You know, I'll be like, damn man. You know, I told my family about it. Twenty seven. I tell my family everything, and and some of my family that knew about it, they still invited them back to a family reunion barbecue, knowing I was gonna be there. You know, I'm like, fuck, 
I was like, but that's just all good of a carne asada he made. I was just, you know. <laughs> That already happened to you a long time ago. Like, okay. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty your good. Dog. Yeah. Eat your feelings. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck, it is pretty good. Dog. I don't know what he marinates it in, but fuck, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when you tell that joke to a room full of strangers, dog, it's the most therapeutic thing yeah. that could that I could do, you know, but but the bottom line is, is like when we go through shit like this, which a lot of people go through, is like you got to put in the work. And that's well, what, that's the that's the thing I struggle with. Yeah. How is, old you know, are you now? 42. All right. And this happened to you from five to seven. So mm -hmm. look, look how long this has affected you. There's so many people out there. Listen, if this is something that's happened to you, you should definitely talk to somebody. And I, I hate that you didn't feel believed or, you know, and it's still fucking with. Here's the other thing. That guy, if if that's me. I don't, I'm not showing up to the cookouts. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not yeah. coming back around. Yeah. People are like wonder why he don't come around anymore. Yeah. It's but he still shows up. Yeah, because not everybody knows. I mean, and he not. knows that they know, and he still shows up. Well, he knows that my mom and dad know, and that I know. Nobody else really knows, homie, you know? But I, I, I want to have a talk with him because... He you went through. You he, need to because I'm close with his mom and dad. Like, yeah, they're good people, homie. It's just that this and fucked up shit either. happened. They don't know either, homie. So it's like, and then you start. I just want to have a talk to him to be like, because so after that pedo happened, when they invite uh, pedo, like sorry, uh, after that thing happened, um, where he was at the barbecue, I fucking you know, I remember I was doing a show. Remember, you know, the Independent downtown, that yeah. that, that old theater. Mm -hmm. I was doing a show there that night, and I'll never forget. Uh, I was at my mom and dad's and, and they were acting like everything was all good. And I said, you guys fucking had him at the barbecue? And I fucking, ex I just all this emotion came out. I called my own parents who fucking came from nothing and provided me opportunities, motherfuckers. You know, I go, you motherfuckers, dude. You invited them back up to him, all this shit, you know? And my dad's, he doesn't know how to process emotion. He's old school, dude. He's an old school G, you know? And they don't have those tools, you know? So I can't blame them for that. They did the best they fucking could and I'm so grateful for that. And, you know, but my dad didn't know what to do. He just fucking put his arms out. He's like, I don't know what I was thinking, mijo. I'm sorry. You know, and I fucking hugged it out. My mom was fucking bawling. And then I went to the end of the pan theater and fucking, bam, served him up, homie. Comedy saved my shit. Saved my life, too, for real. But my mom and dad are some of the best people in the world, homie. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anybody to think anything differently of them, you know? People that know my mom and dad, they're like, damn, man, that's a good time. Now, do you know if your sister suffered the same? She went through, yeah. By him as well? No, 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 no. Not by him. I don't know. We might be getting too personal. That's, right now. That's my sister's business. That's 100% your sister's business. But, you know, yeah, we went through some shit, man. But this is, like you said, it goes back to your mom. And who knows before that? Like, you're exactly. the one trying, you're trying to break this fucking yeah. disgusting and, and, cycle. And, but to just, to just speak on my sister, she is the fucking heart and the leader of this shit, you know? She's she has two kids now. She just had she has a daughter, 4 years old, she, who she named after me, Frankie. She her name's Frankie. My my um my daughter came down to Stella and Frankie. She oh, hates, yeah. she hates Frankie. She's like, "I would have hated Frankie." I'm like, "Frankie's a cute name." <laughs> That's a dope it is, name, it is, dog. It is. And then now she just had a, a son 3 months ago, Charlie. So they're Frankie and Charlie. And and uh, my sister's doing everything in her power to break the fucking interge intergenerational trauma and all yeah. that. She's reading books, all this well, shit. Well, her daughter's fi boom. almost five, the age yeah. where you suffered this bullshit. I mean, yeah. imagine, can you even, you can't even comprehend. I, I, my daughter's eight right now. I can't comprehend it if that would have already happened to her and she had <sighs> gone through that. Like, you Jesus fucking shit, Christ. Homie? And then the, 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 cross is yours to bear you're the one sitting across from me right now talking about therapy mm -hmm. you're the one talking about trying to break this trauma you're the one over here saying well my dad didn't have these coping mechanisms and my mom it happened to her you're the one processing every feeling mm -hmm. every feeling the abuse the uh reasoning behind why these people don't have it like it's all on you mm -hmm. and that's a hell of a fucking spot to be in uh, to move forward. So mm. has this scared you from wanting to have kids? Like, do you think that plays a part in it? Or do you want to be a dad? Do you want to have kids? I, I mean, it definitely You come from a, a, plays big, a extended family. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, homie. My mom and dad are on me every day. My are mom they? used to oh, be like, are? no, me don't do it right. You know, yeah. meet a nice woman, get, get married. 
my mom is she's her, she's hood as fuck. Yeah. She's the most hood one in our family. She's from the project. So she her t- vocabulary is this. Her words to me is like, I don't give a fuck if you get a hood rat pregnant at this point. You bring me that fucking baby. Go get a fucking hood rat pregnant and bring me that baby. That's she what she to told grandma, me, dude. Yeah. So she's telling me that shit, and my my my, my dad usually has my back. You know, she's like, you got to have a fucking baby, mijo. That's what we do. It's familia out here. And I'm like, yeah, but mom, I'm chasing this dream. And can't have it and da, da, da. My dad always has my back and will be like, hey, hey, let him do his thing. You know, he's like, look, look, we, you know, he fucking did it. You know, he's, he's making his own feria, like da, da, da. Like, you know, there's even been times in the past where I had to help them out financially. Like, that is a blessing, homie. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at uh, that time, though. You know, my mom was like, you got to have a baby. And I looked at my dad and just had my back like he always does. And he looks at me and goes, just one, mijo. I was like, fuck. <laughs> just one. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> just one, mijo, all right? You know, just like, fuck, man. So now, you know, I'm like, fuck, well, maybe I just need to go. Are you seeing anyone? Yeah, you know, I I, I got to, well, I, I yeah, I'm like separated. We're separated right now, but there's, there's one in my life that I'm like, if I get married, it's going to be her. Yeah. You know, she's been a day one, homie. She was there with me when I was sleeping on my homie's couch, fucking would loan me money every now and then. Like, you know what I mean? She's the day one. So it's like, even if I don't marry her, even if I end up whatever, single or something, I'm, take, I'm taking with. care of her. Yeah. I'm taking care of her. But she's two years older than me. I'm 42. So the whole baby thing ain't mm-hmm. going to be with her. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't even want it. And and even her own cousins, they live in Taiwan. They're like, no, we got good surrogates out here. We'll make sure we get a good one. She's like, fuck that. I don't want to do that either. You got to take all the shots and all that. I'm not educated on all that, but she was explaining that to me. I was like, all right, yeah, I understand. So I don't know. I'm back and forth with it. But my sister has the two kids, so either way, I think we'll be all right. But when my dad told me that, I was like, fuck, man. I got to give him this baby, you know? Now, and, do you and, find yourself as an uncle being, like, protective of your niece and nephew, like, and, and how you will be moving forward? Do you already feel a sense of, like, I got to protect these kids? Hell yeah, dog. Yeah. Like, pff, homie, the, the shit that happened to me happened in my pad. That's what I want so, to say from your own family. I be Imagine tell- these people I out there don't know anything exactly. about you, don't give a fuck about and you. And I feel bad about it sometimes, but tell- sometimes I tell my own primos or, or my family that, oh, who's babysitting who? Hey, man, hey, homie, make sure you fucking make Listen, sure. Listen, man, you, know? you should. My- I've had this conversation with my daughter's mother where she thinks I overdo it sometimes, but from things I've read, you should always ask. And look, let's just be honest, men especially, if my daughter's having a sleepover, who who else is going to be there? Do they have any older siblings? Any yeah. uncles or aunts live with them? Any extended family? Do they have guns in the house? You know, yep. shit like that. You should ask that. You're parenting. That's you good parenting, that. homie. That's parenting. Yeah, yeah. That's not being overprotective. That's just being smart and right, protective. Right, right, For And sure, at least, homie. even if you let them still go, at least you are armed with knowledge. That's what's going on over there. There's an uncle that lives there or a grandfather or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, you yeah. should know all the fucking lay of the land when your kid's going somewhere that you're is going to spend the night. You know, yeah. and you're right. This happened in your own. That's why I was saying, like, is he just babysitting you while they're gone? You're like, no, they're there, and he's still doing this. Like, yeah, that's I mean, that is mental illness. So yeah, but man, with that being said, like my mom and dad, they taught me a lot of good things, homie. You know, and and I and and uh, I never did. I didn't even smoke weed till I was like 19. You know, I was just like. And all my homeboys were all funny. Hey, homie, you're already so funny. Imagine if you got high. Like, it'd be that more funny. Da, da, da. So when did the drug start for you? I was like 23 already. Oh, really? Yeah. And I what started did you doing get ecstasy. Into? ecstasy. It was when ecstasy first started popping. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And because uh, that shit is like, hey, I'm fucking high-fiving strangers. What's up, <laughs> y'all? Let's kick it, you know? <laughs> and and uh, I just felt fucking good, homie. I didn't feel no pain. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and then it moved to... Um, other shit, you know, I'll, anything I get my hands on, you know, little pain pills here and there, get you through the day. Uh, but when it got weird was the the cocaine, man, you know, which flows like wine in comedy clubs, as you know. So it's a motherfucker, man, because I used to be like, get a bag of cocaine. Hey, where the homies at? Where's the girls? Let's get a crack in. And I would still do that, but it got to a point where like, ooh, can't wait to get home though, so then I can get really weird. Especially when you got a little bit of fame, you know, we walk down the streets, people recognize us. So I can't be on, you know. So I go home, draw the curtains, da da da, and it's just me in the bag, homie. And that bag gives me everything I need, numbs me out, homie. I'm not thinking about no pain, no problems. I'm just, 
you know, you turn it, you turn into a fucking lab rat, really, you know, when you're there by your, it's, it's a red flag to be doing cocaine by yourself. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but dog, you turn into a fucking lab rat, homie. I'll be laying it's in bed. It's a red flag. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> dog, I'll, be, dog, I'll be, I'll be trying to like watch porn, but you can't even get your shit up. So I'll be, I'll be, look, I'll be, I'll be looking at the porn on my laptop, like rubbing my little cocoa puff, like, mm, come on, come on, grow, grow, please. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, maybe if I do a little line, you'll help. Mm. you know, and I'm, you're just a fucking lab rat, just fucking, and it's like, oh man, and and, to, and my, I would let my, I would, the last thing you want to do is look at your cell phone when you're in that fucking uh, position. So I would start, you know, people start worrying about me. Like, where the fuck is this motherfucker at? You know, da da da. Dog. And then he, and then you start getting fucking paranoid. The gardener showed up. Like, we have a, a whole protected, like, whatever complex. Uh, there's six units in the building. It's all gated and all that. But the gardener comes to, you know, blow, you know, make sure mm -hmm. our porches are cool and all that. And I'm all high as fuck. Been up for like a couple of days. And I, I got my bag, I'm holding my bottle of whiskey like a baby. And oh, I think, you're drinking I think, with I think, it, too. I think, I think, oh, yeah, I mean, hand in hand. Those go hand in hand, dog. And I'm fucking thinking it's fucking, fuck, fool, they're here. They're here to get me. They, they found out. They know. Like, just whatever, the cops, the authorities. And then I hear the blower, and they're like, oh, they're going to blow all the cocaine away and all this shit. Like, <laughs> I was out of my <laughs> fucking <laughs> mind, homie. Yeah, yeah. And I'm fucking, like, peeking out the door. And then, and then it's the fucking gardener, man, you know? And I was like, fuck, man. But luckily... I got good friends and family, and around that time, as I, you know, uh, gracias a Dios, thank God that you know, uh, you know, I have insurance, and so I check, I went and checked myself in. You did to uh, rehab, you know. How long before you realized you you needed that? Uh, it was basically, I got on us. I would because I, the way I would do it is I would once my my whole rule was once a month, homie. Go go ahead, miss a night of sleep. Take some ecstasy, go to a party, get wild, and then boom, back to work or back to being mentally, you know, I just needed that one day a month. But then got worse. Then you start making money, homie. You're getting these fat checks. I'm not a fucking dope fiend who owes anybody nothing. All my bills are paid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of justify in your head a little bit. Well, hey, homie, you deserve this. You get on that reward system. You know, we finished the first season of the show. I was didn't touch any drugs. I'm locked in, homie. When it's time to work, especially when I'm into it creatively, I'm trying to kill that motherfucker. I'm trying to leave my mark in this comedy shit because that's why I'm here on this earth, you know? Just, it's overwhelming to think of how many people, you, you know, we meet people at shows. Oh, my gosh, you're so funny. But imagine the shit, people that watch this podcast that are in a whole other part of the world that you're fucking touching. That shit's overwhelming, yeah. homie. You know what I mean? It's our obligation, dog. We got to make this shit crack. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? And so I fucking handled that shit, though. But then when I finished, I was like, all right, maybe I deserve a little something. You know, I should party a little bit, you know? <laughs> and then next thing you know, I got, I got a fucking tackle box. Dog. Like, like I was going fishing, except I had Xanax, uh, cocaine, MDMA, moon rocks. Oh, fuck. Fucking ketamine, homie. But I was fucking- You went deep. Homie. And I still had work to do, but I was mostly doing like voiceover. And, and it was real COVID-y still. Mm -hmm. So I could still be kind of a little bit weird, but you have to wear the mask. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, I'm underneath there. Like the mask was like that. I'm like, hey. <laughs> I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm here. But another mask, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But I still showed up, motherfucking shit, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but so, so then that shit was going on for like a couple months. And then, and then here's what happened is I had two shows that were already sold out at Stand Up Live in Phoenix, right? Okay. And you know, that's a big venue. That's yeah, yeah. Well, 550, so yeah. over a thousand motherfuckers that were just already ready, signed up to go. I got on a sick one so bad, I forgot what fucking day it was. And my primo Ruben, who you got to meet, is a fucking no neck motherfucker. Boom. He's been, he, he was locked up, all that shit, but came out. He's a feel good story. Got his life together. And now, you know, now he's on payroll. Rolling with us, rolling with me on tour, helping with logistics, shit, all that, you know? And that's my that's my dude. And um, and I forgot what day it was. He has a key to my pad and everything, right? So he's rolling to come, hey, let's pack up the merch, let's roll out, you know, let's get the crew together. We're going to go to the airport. And I'm just in the living room, like, like on a sick one. And he walks in, he's like, What the fuck, motherfucker? And then I'm like, What? He's like, what do you mean? What? We got to go to fucking Phoenix. You got two shows tonight. And I'm like, fuck, tonight. fuck, fuck. 
And I said, fuck it, just tell him I got COVID and we had to cancel, reschedule. He's like, no, nah, fuck that. We're fucking going. He physically fucking just gets, picks me up, homie, he takes me to the car. We go to fucking Burbank Airport. We show up to Phoenix. It's like 120 degrees. Yeah, and yeah. I'm all fucking, I'm like, oh. <laughs> You know, you know the motherfuckers at the airport that have pictures of you, like they show, they know when you're gonna land, <laughs> yeah. and they want to sign and take pictures. Yeah. I'm like, okay, thanks for watching the show, and you know, fuck on me, and that, and that's when it all changed for me because my cousin, you know, he has my back, and and, and dude, I don't know how, like we made it to the hotel. I slept for like an hour and a half after not sleeping for like two days, and I don't know, man, the universe had my back, God, whatever that day. I still had a little bit of money left, so I took a little bit of money, and I got through the shows, and they went good, man, both of them. And I got into the green room, and my cousin Ruben looks at me and says, hey, you got away with one tonight, motherfucker, but this is it. You're done. You know, and da-da-da. Like, we got to, you got all these opportunities. You worked your ass off all these years. Good. You're going to throw this it away a, for this shit. This is an ex-con coming out. I, feel I'll bring good. up a picture of him, or maybe we could put it, but, like, that's my boy, man. He's in some of the videos, uh, mm -hmm. Cholo Fit videos. Uh, but, so I was like, all right. I need to slow down, obviously. You know, I forgot what day it was and I had two shows that night. So I said, all right, Frankie, you know, time to lock it up on me and slow down. And I made that decision in my mind. I said, all right, time to slow down. And I couldn't do it, homie. I actually got back from that trip and I was going to check my mail on my table and I, there was a hat on the table and I took the hat and I forgot about a pile that was there. No. And I looked at the pile and I was like, nah, homie. And I seriously, it was like watching myself from the outside. I just fucking got a straw, went down. And it's like, I couldn't stop myself. And I said, all right, call my agents, my reps. I said, look, we need to schedule this shit in. I want to check myself in. If you guys want to drop me, I don't give a fuck. I'm about to die. I'm killing Good for myself. for you, yeah, you're killing so yourself. So I fucking went, homie. I fucking went to that bellow and fucking, and it cleared myself up, cleared my mind. How long were you there? Uh... I did a month and then I did a month in uh, IOP, which is like uh, when you go, I did a month where I'm just there. Mm -hmm. And then I did a month where I go 9, 9 a.m. to like 1 p.m. every day to a spot. I see. And then I you did that. Go, you can leave after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I needed to hit that reset button, homie, big time. And have you been clean since? I was clean for six months. Now mm -hmm. I've been drinking again. And, you know, I did a little coke here and there. But I'm so scared now of going back to that place I was. Because I was in a spot where every time I was partying, there was four times in a row where I'd be like, all right, I need to chill. Where I would literally, it would take me to my knees. All my serotonin, everything's gone, homie. Where I'm on my knees, where I told you, in my living room, begging the universe to take this monster away from me. And luckily, I got good homeboys, man, good familia. They come through, they scrape me off the ground, take me to the fucking pass, start feeding me soup. And I fucking, come on, man, you know? And, but, you know, sometimes when it, and a non-addict trying to understand an addict is very difficult sometimes because they're like, they don't get it. They're like, what the fuck, man? You're making all this money and right. you're fucking, what are you doing? It's because, you know, it's it, it's the only time that I feel free is when I'm on, you know, and I'm grateful that, yeah, I'm able to pay my bills now and I'm making this money and all that. But that shit don't mean happiness, homie. That shit don't mean success. Nope. Success is a, a, a difficult motherfucker, dog. Yep. You get more shit pulling at you. You get more people expecting things from you. You get people that feel like they owe you something, you know? And, and you owe them something. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yes. feel like, like like I owe them something That's right. just because I became successful. Uh -huh. I don't owe you shit, dog. I don't dog. owe you shit. I made this happen from nothing, That's you know right. what I'm saying? And, and, and what they also don't know is that you're not – at least what I'm learning about your story is when somebody walks in and sees you in this state, it's not, oh, Frankie's got money and he's a junkie now. It's what they no, don't no. know is the demon that, or demons you've been battling since five years old and yeah. trying to get this fucking thing out of you. That's that's. I really feel like if you can, I don't know for you, Frankie. I mean, I feel like if you can take that fucking cousin out and at least have that conversation you want, and maybe if you get the I'm sorry, then maybe it'll help. Yeah. You know, maybe it'll help. It seems like it's something you want. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe more need. Maybe more need for you at this point. I yeah. mean, you're fucking. You're in your forties now. This guy's at least ten years older, right? So he's in his fifties. Yeah. I, I, does he have even, kids? Even, even more important than that, he does. Mm. Even more important than that, though, I think it's just me working it out in uh, you know, in the therapy rooms, you know. Mm -hmm. And I got some. Their motherfuckers is their specialty, you know, is is addiction, trauma, Abuse. all that. But the thing is, I struggle in those rooms, man, because I still, 
like I'm, you know, I've been suppressing that shit for 27 years, doc. So it's it's deep in there. So it's just taking, it's, you know, and I can see it frustrating the therapist too. It's taking it a long time because I'll deflect it. Even when I start crying, I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, uh, okay, anyways. And then she's like, no, let that shit go, yeah. motherfucker. Stop let the tears go. Yes. Process this shit. Mm -hmm. Feel it. You know, and she wants me to like describe the 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 memories of it and walk up to her through it. I can't, I can't fucking do it, homie. You know, but I want to get there. Now, the thing is that I'm working on it. It's just hard work. I think you did a hell of a good job here today talking about that on a show like this and putting that out there. I, I mean, mean, this is the powerful. most I put it out there, homie. So, hey, love y'all shit. If y'all motherfuckers have been through this shit, then I hope this is helping. Talk to somebody. Please and talk then, to somebody. And I hope none of y'all are like, oh, dang, that fool's a fucking weirdo. Well, actually, I am a weirdo, so fuck it. I accept it, you know, but. Anybody that would think that 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 happened to a five year old kid? I mean, Jesus Christ! I, I go back to thinking about my daughter was five when the pandemic hit, and you know she's just learning how to read. Santa's real to her, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. You were, I like, mean, you could tell a kid at that age anything. We mm -hmm. do. We tell them about Santa, Easter bunnies, tooth fairies, Jesus, <laughs> all that bullshit. We right, tell them right. all these things, and they believe it all because they trust you. Yeah, you yeah. did nothing wrong. This guy, I mean, violated every aspect of of trust with you in every sense. Right. And then continued to do it. Yeah. And then you fucking stood up for yourself and gets brushed under a rug, literally. Dude showing up in and out of your life. Of course you're going to have fucking feelings about that. And then the older you get. Also, I can imagine, too, once, once you started feeling like, I'm, I'm getting stronger and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, then you start feeling different things. Like, I want to fuck this motherfucker up. I or, went through those stages. Yeah, yeah. I'm angry. And because to the you're defense, growing through this process. When, my, when I flat, when I, t I would never talk to my parents how I said when I, before I did that show at the independent theater. Motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. My, 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 my pops went to my cousin's work during the day and, and, and he had, and yeah. And, and, you know, so. What'd he say? He just said, he went to his hey, job. Homie. Yeah, and he's like, you know, pulled him out. And he's like, hey, homie, uh, Frankie's pissed. He's like, I, I know you remember what happened. And he said my cousin broke down, started crying. And then he said, man, it's always been the one thing I regretted in my life, Theo, and I'm sorry. You know, he's like, stay. He's like, you're not invited to the house anymore and all that. And then just let it be. It did make me feel better that at least he felt apologetic and you know, but I want to have that talk to him face to face. Yeah. You so I will say it. that, you know, because that, that happened. So. Well, that's know. better than him denying it and saying it's bullshit yeah, or anything yeah. like I, that I for you. He might be sure. like, what? I never did that. Right, right. No, nah, no. Nah, he, it, it got, he was crying. So I was like, all right. You know, and he's a fucking big old looking motherfucker too. So. And here's the other thing too, man. Unfortunately, this might be the beginning of you helping other people in your family come forward about. Maybe it happened to them as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you might be saving other people by helping yourself in the end. Yeah. Well, yeah, even when I do that joke, I told you about the damn, make a good ass carne mm. asada, though. Every time I do that joke, man, never, not one time have I not gotten at least one, two to five messages from audience members being like, thank you for that joke. Here's what happened to me. Right. You know? And so. I don't know, man. You know, I'm not here to like save the world or, and I don't believe like that or whatever, but just all by I saving know is, yourself, you're saving a lot of fucking people. Yeah. It's just, it's something I'm always going to struggle with because, you know, my family parties on me, like, you know, that's what we do. Fucking barbecues, tequila, fucking, you know, fools are crying, fools are fighting. It's like, that's, that's a, that's, a, that's, 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 yeah. a, that's a typical family barbecue yeah. in our family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so. It's something I'll always struggle with, but as long as I put in that work, you know, I go to meetings and shit. Do you? You know, sometimes, you know, I was drinking for, uh, I, I was six months totally sober and then I started drinking and I was good for like four and a half months. And then fucking one night got me, dog. Started hitting that fucking pop. <sighs> oh shit, there it is. Oh dang, it does feel good. And aren't you scared today now too with fentanyl and everything that one bad bump's going to fucking wipe yeah, yeah, you I, out? I, I used you, to then buy, you're gone. I used to get it from whoever, but. I got the one plug that I know is that good, good. <laughs> but but I got put on Vosita restriction, they call it. What's that? Uh, Vosita is a bag of coke. Mm -hmm. but Who put all, you on the restriction? All the OGs. So I got some homies, you know. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. The dealers put you on a restriction? Well, the OGs at, 
I can say, well, I, I got I got some homies, you know. Yeah. You got good, Looking out for you. Good people that got my back, you know. <laughs> They're and, like, uh, Frankie's only allowed to have yeah. this much. Or, yeah, and so they got to put the alert out. You know, and they they just let they text those fools, and and those fools are you know they 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 they're about it too, and 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 there was one of my primos who was serving me, and he was and I was at and it was like once a week, and he goes, hey homie, you good? I was like, oh no, it's for another comedian, homie. It's not for my me, homie. I, I'm done. You know, I got shit to do. You know, and then I'll go right to the fucking pattern. <laughs> you know, it's just like so for there's fools that got my back, man, and I you know, and I'm I'm very grateful for that because. I might not be alive if it wasn't for them, you know. Well, but, let me tell you something. You had your back. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Thank God you did. Yeah. Because you wouldn't be alive. No. You would have drunk or fucking drugged yourself to death or anything. And thank God you're not repeating this fucking abusive, vicious cycle and that you're in the middle of it trying to figure out how to stop it. And, man, I feel for you, dude. Good for you, though. Thank Good you, for you, For thank real. Thank you, homie. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to meetings. I'm doing the thing. The thing is, is that you have to do the work, you know, or else it's gonna get you. Absolutely. My, I like I can't do it alone, homie. Every day, my own mind or myself is trying to de destroy myself. Have you ever tried EMDR therapy? I'm gonna do that next. Good. Yeah. Do it. It works. Dance. Yep. Yeah. yeah the little buzzers shit. in your hand. It fucking works. Yeah. It works. I had to go for it. Um. And the the good thing is, it's not talk therapy. There's an end to it. Mm -hmm. You'll know when you're done with it. You'll be like, that's it. That's it. Damn. Whew, All right, look, boy. dude, thank you for this episode. I know we got to get you out of here. You no, gotta, no, no. We're good. It's okay. We're good, homie. But we're right there at the end. I want to tell you, um, first of all, thank you. I know that shit's no, no, not easy to dude. talk about. There's a lot of people are going to reach out to you about this, and thank you for this. It's Honestly, homie, thank you for even like willing to be going there with me and to, to go through it. I mean, I'm probably going to cry after this, but you know, I'm trying not to cry on camera. But as fucked up as the shit that that is and um, all the struggles that my family went through, they took care of me, man, and the best that they could. And with that being said, all the pain that I have in me, you know, without, without the darkness, there ain't no light, homie. And so, like, <sighs> there's a big part of me that's grateful that I have this pain in me because... When I'm able to go make people laugh and smile, like that shit is like an explosion to me that I might not have ever experienced if I didn't go through this pain. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm grateful for all my fans, all the people that fuck with me, all the people that watch my sketch videos, the TV shows, all that shit. I never, you know, and it's never what you expect it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Like you think one day like, damn, homie, imagine if I was on a TV show, like that'd be crazy. Then you get there and it's just more stress and work, man. But yeah. you are grateful. You are like, yeah. damn, I'm on a thing. So the thing is, the thing I focus on is that I got an opportunity to make people feel good. And if I, my goal is to touch as many people as I can on this earth. I know I'm not for everybody, but the, for the, for the ones that rock with me, they really rock with me, homie. Yeah. And so I want to do, I want to do as much dope work and don't feel good shit as possible before I leave this earth. And so, yeah. And that all, and, you know, and all that work and grindness and, and, and uh, just happiness that it came from that darkness and that pain. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm just very grateful for that. I'm grateful for people like you that see that and have my back and are willing to have these conversations. And uh, so thank you, man. Thank you thank for having you. me, Ryan. I appreciate it. Listen, thank yourself because all that is great. Everybody is you've mentioned is wonderful, but you had your fucking back. You yeah. had your fucking back. A lot yeah. of people don't ever figure that out. Yeah, yeah, you it. know, a lot of people don't even know they can stick up for themselves or how to do it. And, and you going through the pain in the process. So good for you, dude. Right on, homie. Um, before we wrap up, I'm, I told you I'm going to ask you after whatever we talk about, advice you would give to your 16-year-old self. Oh, yeah, yeah. Woo. Now, considering what we've just talked yeah, about, like, 16 years uh, old. I would say therapy is not just for white people, motherfucker. <laughs> Get your ass there, yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I would say that therapy's not white people, and, and, and um, you know, uh, it's not your fault. And I, I, I don't know, man. I, I would just say that, uh, just, uh, I don't know, man. Get that shit out, motherfucker, is what I would tell my 16 year old self, you know? Quit holding it in. Yeah. But with that being said, I've had a good life. I'm very grateful, man. 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're still here. You yeah. could have been a statistic a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, Frankie, thank you so much. One more time again, please plug, promote everything, all of it. Oh, yeah. Just go to uh, FrankieQuinones.com. Uh, I'll be at, uh, let's see, uh, uh, I'll be at uh, Stand Up Live Phoenix on uh, June 30th. I'll be at Houston Improv uh, the last weekend of July. I'll be at the Comedy Den in uh, Chicago in August. Uh, but the main thing is, please tune in to the second season of This Fool on Hulu. All 10 episodes drop on July 28th. Uh, so that should be cracking. And then I'll be on the upcoming season of what we do in the shadows. Uh, then you can go to my YouTube. Watch that Cholo Fit, homie. You can go to Cholo Fit Creeper on his Instagram. You know, homie. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Do the damn thing. Feel good. Be nice to somebody today. <laughs> you feel me? That shit helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. <laughs> be nice to somebody today. Yeah. 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 Um, as always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Share the YouTube special. Come see me on tour. Check out the Patreon. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm -hmm.